Good morning students. Hope you are following me and covering the portions day by day. At least little by little. Are you doing it? Okay, anyhow. So today we are supposed to move to one new chapter. That is from unit 3, chapter 6. That is respiration. Right? Okay. Anyhow, let us move to the topic respiration. Fine. Okay, fine. Let us move to the topic. And the previous topic actually we discussed about this digestion, right? Digestion. Could you say what is digestion? So digestion is a process where the complex molecule become as its, its own simplest molecules. Fine. So example we could say carbohydrate is a complex molecule, right? And during digestion, the carbohydrate will become as its own simplest molecule, glucose. With the help of this, you know, digestive enzyme as well as the mechanical digestion also there, right? So, the total digestive system as well as these enzymes which is secreted by these glands will help for this process, right? So, finally, carbohydrate becomes as a glucose. So, this is a process we said it is going on in the digestive system, right? Okay. So, our today's topic is respiration. So, is there any link between this digestion as well as the respiration? Of course, surely there will be their link. Because in the digestive system, we say after the digestion, this digest the food is going to give the energy to us, to our body for to do every activity is fine. So, of course, the energy will be produced from this nutrients which we take. Right? So, where from this energy is produced? Right? So, that is this area where we will discuss about this respiration. So, respiration is this process where from this energy is produced. Listen, from the digestion process, we have produced the glucose, right? So, this glucose is now present in the cells, right? Through the respiratory system, we inhale oxygen. Actually, we inhale air. The air consists of oxygen. So, this oxygen also reaches the cells. Fine. There, this glucose and oxygen, this metabolic process, respiratory process is going on inside the cells. That is the process of respiration, right? By this respiration process, this glucose and oxygen will be converted into the major thing, energy. Have we got energy? So, energy will be in the form of actually ATP. ATP, right? Along with this, as a waste product, carbon dioxide also will be produced. This is toxic to the body, right? Hence, it should be eliminated. So, through this breathing process, we will inspire oxygen. The oxygen will reach the cells. There it is producing energy. Then, along with it, this, you know, toxic substance, carbon dioxide also will be produced. So, this carbon dioxide must be eliminated through the same uh, respiratory system. That is known as actual respiration. So, meanwhile, this oxygen, sorry, water also will be produced during this process. Have we got? So, actually, that is a respiration. So, if we say this one definition for this respiration, we could say the term respiration refers to this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between environment and in ourselves. Have we got? We are leaving this carbon dioxide. Actually, we are leaving carbon dioxide actually we, and we are receiving the oxygen from the environment. So, this exchange is going on between this environment, environment as well as this, you know, this exchange is going on between the environment and in our cells. Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Have we got? Okay. So, this process is known as to release this energy, to release this energy. This process is known as, as respiration. Have we got? Fine. So, in this chapter, we are going to discuss about, so what are these functions of this respiratory system? This is the main function, we said exchange of gases, right? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. So, other than this, what are the functions are done by this respiratory system, right? And especially, you should know about this anatomy of this respiratory system. Fine. So, we will learn about the functions. And we will learn about this anatomy, right? Then we will discuss about this mechanism of breathing. How this process is going on? This exchange, right? Mechanism of breathing. 
then transport of this oxygen and carbon dioxide how this oxygen is transported from this external environment to cells or uh, how this carbon dioxide is taken from the cells to the external environment this transportation process right so transportation then we will discuss about the certain disorders which is related to this respiratory system right so it's supposed to discuss about the functions right functions then we will discuss about this anatomy anatomy right then mechanism mechanism of breathing then transport of oxygen transportation right oxygen and carbon dioxide transportation and certain disorders so this is a thing we are going to explain in this chapter fine as per that the first one we have to discuss about this you know the functions of this respiratory system have we got fine so let us begin this respiratory function so respiratory respiratory functions okay let us see so of course we know about this main function of this respiratory system that is this exchange of an exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and our blood right blood cells so we can see the first one exchange exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide so there is a first respiratory system function right and second function it is used to maintain this a uh, regulation of ph value of this body so it is used to maintain the homeostatic actually here one word they mentioned it is homeostatic homeostatic so which means you know whatever things in the body either it is a secretion or hormone secretion or enzyme secretion either temperature or acidity level ph level whatever it is it should be maintained in a constant level constant so this constant level only we could say as a homeostatic condition right so if you take temperature so our normal body temperature 97. you know fahrenheit something fahrenheit so it should not exceed meanwhile you should not reduce if there is any changes it leads to some discomfort right the same ph means actually it is as acid and base level acidity and alkalinity level that is mentioned with the ph level right so hydrochloric acid ph level we said saliva ph level we said everything ph level will be there so this ph level should be maintained in a constant condition so that also maintained with the help of this respiratory system fine okay and the third function is so when we inhale this air of course the air may consist of lot of pathogens right so when we inhale we are not going to inhale only the pure oxygen alone we used to inhale the air so the air consists of carbon dioxide nitrogen oxygen dust particles will be there pathogens will be there even we are living in this polluted environment right so pollution will be there so along with everything only we are going to breathe so so this respiratory system is protecting our body from this pathogens pathogens as well as pollutions so it is giving protection to the body from the pathogens as well as pollutions right and the next we could say it is used to maintain this you know normal vocal cords do you know vocal vocal cords vocal cord is present in this you know larynx region right vocal cords vocal cords so this is useful to produce this noise or words to communicate to each other right so this is present along with the respiratory system only when we explain about the anatomy you can understand so larynx is there inside the larynx vocal cord is there right so this vocal cord also maintained with the help of this respiratory system fine and finally we could say it is used to remove the heat which is produced by the metabolic process as we said already you know meta ma many metabolic process is going on inside this you know cells so during this process heat will be produced heat right heat will be produced so this heat must be eliminated from the body through this respiratory system 
fine so this respiratory system is helping to you know send or eliminate the heat also how the heat is produced it is produced by this you know metabolic process right so these are all this major functions we could say which is done with the help of this respiratory system fine so exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide and it is maintaining the homeostatic condition of this pH level and it is protecting the body from the pathogen as well as the pollutions it is maintaining this vocal cords for better communication and it is used to eliminate this heat also right so there is a respiratory uh, system function fine okay so let us go for the next concept actually here they say of course we know the respiratory system is doing this respiratory function right but this respiratory system right but this respiratory system is of course we know respiratory system respiratory system so this respiratory system consists of respiratory organs right organs so this respiratory organ may vary for animal to animal it is based on mainly it's based on its habitat actually mainly it's based on a habitat habitat and we could say about this organization 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 means the level of levels of organization we should know that one so habitat means maybe it may be a aquatic organism or it may be as a terrestrial organisms so if it is aquatic the dissolved oxygen level will be very less in the water it will be less in water the oxygen level will be low in water but it is high in this high on the air land so air in the air the oxygen level will be high but the water the oxygen level will be low okay then so that's why the aquatic organisms has to do the heavy breathing to get lot of oxygen because the dissolved oxygen level will be very low understand so it will be more much faster than this terrestrial organisms so terrestrial level they said on the land the oxygen content will be more the air consists of lot of oxygen so it will be slow the breathing process will be slow do you get me okay and the second one is based on this organization level of organization so we may discuss in the classification area level of organization means cellular level of organization will be there tissue level of organization will be there organ level of organization will be there and organ system level of organization will be there right so based on that the breathing capacity will be there right so this is so this uh, respiratory organ or the system is based on this animals as per this habitat and as per this level of organization okay so let us see this what are the various organs will be used for this respiratory respiration process okay so first of all we could say you know sponges we can begin from this lower level porifera if we say every phylum you know sponges sponges is a phylum porifera and sponges then we could say about this you know sealant rate sealant rates then flatworms flatworms for these are kind of this organisms they said this body surface body surface round worm also we could say the cuticle round worm the body covering the cuticle is useful for respiration so the body surface by simple diffusion method simple diffusion method by simple diffusion method this gas will be exchanged right so that is the method which is followed for this even porifera sealant rata platyhel means the sascal means the animals right then the next is it is earthworms for earthworm we could say it is this skin right the skin will be as a respiratory organ right then and uh, insects 
arthropods, insects. For insects, tracheal tube. Tracheal tube is there. For but for aquatic insects, gills will be there. For aquatic insects, gills will be this respiratory organ. Right. Then arthropods. So uh, uh, insect is arthropod, then mollusk we can say. Also for gills will be the respiratory organ. Then echinodermata. For echinodermata we could say, you know, water vascular system is there for echinodermata, right? Water vascular system and it consists of the tube feet. Do you remember? Tube feet is there. So through this tube feet it is taking this you know, water and it is useful for respiration. All those things we discussed already. Fine. Okay. You know, dermata. Then caudata. Caudata. So caudata means five classes we could say. Pieces, amphibians, reptiles, apes and mammals. All those things. For this, since it is a higher organisms, we can say there is a well developed, you know, lungs. Well developed lungs is there for us as a respiratory organ. Okay, so amphibia is one of the exception. We could say it is since it is one of this uh, and amphibians, it used to live inside this water as well as on the land. So it is using its, you know, lungs is a respiratory organ and the gills is a respiratory organ and, and uh, skin also the respiratory organ for amphibians, right? So these are all this respiratory organs, right? So we could say from this every, every phylum, on an example, we could say and it's respiratory organ also okay and now we are going to discuss about this the respiratory system of human being understand Fine. so let us look into this respiratory system of human right so respiration for human okay so here i have written about this respiratory path actually fine for human respiratory system the path of this respiratory system where it commences and the end Right, that is the respiratory path. So first of all, of course, we should, you may know the respiratory system begins from the external nostrils. Right, so it is vis well visible outside through the nose. Right, so external nostrils will be there. Then this is leading to the nasal chamber. So the nostril leads to this, you know, cavity. The cavity region is called as nasal chamber. Okay. This nasal chamber leads to nasopharynx. So nasopharynx means, do you know what is pharynx? Pharynx is a common part. Already this, this about this pharynx we discussed well in this digestion area, right? So pharynx is a part where this respiratory system as well as a digestive system meets. So that is a pharynx region, right? So the pharynx part where this nasal chamber is leading, that region is known as a nasopharynx, okay? Then this nasopharynx is, of course, it is leading to this trachea. So before that, the trachea consists of one opening, right? The tracheal opening. That opening is known as glottis, okay? Above this glottis, one muscular flap is here. That flap is known as epiglottis, okay? Epiglottis. This, what is the use of this epiglottis? This also already we have said. Because pharynx is a common part where this air also used to come. Meanwhile, this food also used to come, right? So when we swallow the food, this epiglottis region will glow, will close this glottis, the hole. So the food don't enter into the larynx. So on the way to the trachea only, on the way to the trachea only, larynx is here, right? So the food must not enter into the larynx. So, this epiglottis will close this glottis region. Okay. So, the food will go to the esophagus. Understand? Now, we can come to the point about the respiratory system. So, glottis and epiglottis will close. But this will be helping during this following process. Understand? Okay. Then, it is leading to the larynx. Larynx leads to the trachea. Right? Okay. Let me show the figure for this first process. First thing till this larynx. Do you get me? Fine. Listen. Okay, listen. So, respiratory path, the first part we said is the external nostril, right? So, this is this part, there is this external nostrils. Fine. 
then it is leading to this nasal chamber right nasal chamber nasal chamber you see so here we could say it is a nasal chamber so this is the chamber the cavity which is leading from this external nostril is known as a nasal chamber right then so actually this is the mouth am i right mouth so mouth is leading to buccal cavity right this is the mouth and buccal cavity so both will open into this pharynx region so this is the pharynx right this is the pharynx so where this you know nasal chamber is opening that part we could see as a nasopharynx so this is nasopharynx understand okay then so naso nasopharynx is here right so nasopharynx region is this one clear then this nasopharynx is leading into the trachea so this is a trachea so before that what is there you know this outer one mus muscular flap you see to close this glottis so this opening we could say as a glottis right so this opening is a glottis fine and epiglottis is the outer muscle which is closing this glottis so this is the epiglottis have you got and inside what is there larynx right inside larynx is there so this is the larynx okay then the larynx leading to the trachea so this is the tracheal tube have you got this is the trachea so trachea is this one do you understand okay let us go for this next part the trachea is leading to what are the regions fine okay listen so the trachea so the trachea consists of like the wall of this trachea consists of ciliated epithelial cells right ciliated epithelial cells its role is it is going to produce a mucus understand okay then the mucus layer of this tracheal wall it consists of the cells that is known as as goblet cells so about goblet cells already we discussed fine so this goblet cells also going to produce this mucus okay so when any foreign particles comes through this respiratory path actually this mucus substance will expel this you know foreign particles through this mucus understand okay then this trachea consists of this several cartilage rings the trachea will be encircled with several cartilage rings so this trachea actually it will extend till this fifth thoracic vertebra so do you know back side actually it is in the lungs is there on trachea is there in the thoracic region right the chest region right so back side what is there vertebral column is there right so vertebral column until the fifth vertebral column or thoracic vertebra understand until the fifth thoracic vertebra this trachea will extend have you got and below that again it will be enclosed by this diaphragm understand so let me show this can you watch this tracheal tube and the tracheal tube is enclosed with this ring shaped structure right so this ring shaped structure is known as as cartilage ring so this cartilage ring is covering this tracheal tube the function we could say because of this tracheal tube it was tracheal this cartilaginous ring tracheal tube will be protected moreover this is making this trachea to open at every time so the trachea will be always open because of this cartilaginous rings have you got okay then this this trachea is going to divide as a bronchi or bronchus okay okay let us see about this bronchi again so listen so this trachea again it will trachea will branch as a bronchi right bronchi so this bronchi the first branch of this trachea we could say is a primary bronchi again it will again divide as is branches again so that we could say as a secondary bronchi and the secondary bronchi also further divides as a tertiary bronchi right so here we said in the tracheal tube it is covered with the cartilage rings right but in case of this primary bronchi secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi this also will be covered with a c shape cartilage plate here we said it's a ring but here we said it's a plate c shape cartilage plate fine so listen so trachea 
is dividing as a bronchi, right? So this bronchi again it is branching as a primary bronchi, secondary bronchi and tertiary bronchi. So this expanded structure is given, let us see. So listen, so actually this is a trachea. Trachea will divide into this right as well as a left bronchi, right? So here one single one, they mentioned it says left primary bronchus. Primary bronchus. So this, can you notice the blue color? So this also covered with this cartilaginous plates, cartilage plates, right? Cartilage plates. Then, so this is a primary bronchi we could say, right? So primary bronchi, right? Then this primary bronchi is again divided. Can you notice? It is again dividing. So this we could say as a secondary bronchus. The singular one is a bronchus, right? Secondary bronchus. So this division we could say as a, this is also secondary bronchus. This is also secondary bronchus. Then this secondary bronchi is again dividing, right? Again dividing. So this we could say as a tertiary bronchi. Understand? So primary bronchi, secondary bronchi, as well as a tertiary bronchi. So this fully it is covered with C-shaped cartilage plates, right? Then this tertiary bronchi is again dividing as a bronchioles, right? This bronchioles we could say as a terminal bronchioles, terminal bronchiole, and this is a terminal bronchiole, right? So in this terminal bronchiole, so this is a tertiary bronchiole. This tertiary bronchi is again dividing as a bronchioles. So this bronchiole is known as a terminal bronchiole and this terminal bronchiole finally again divides. So the bronchiole which is closer to the alveoli is known as a respiratory bronchiole. Understand? Respiratory bronchiole. Have you got? So listen. So till here, till this tertiary bronchi there is a T-shaped plate is there, right? Cartilage plate is there. But there is no cartilage plates for in this terminal bronchioles as well as this respiratory bronchiole. Do, do you get me? So in this part it consists of smooth muscles. Smooth muscle. So this muscle is helping you know during respiration it used to contract and relax. When the air is coming inside it should relax. You know it should relax. When the moving air is moving outside it should contract. Right. So for the, during for this process this you know smooth muscle will be helping. Have you got and finally, this respiratory bronchiole will end with this, you know, alveoli. Have you got? So, from this primary trachea, from the trachea to this, you know, tertiary bronchi, they said it is this conducting area. Conducting area because it is passing this air. But this terminal bronchiole and the respiratory bronchiole, they said it is exchange area. Understand? exchange area. Now let us talk about this alveoli again. Fine. So listen. So the alveoli, actually it is the nature of this alveoli he says highly vascularized. Highly vascularized in the sense the alveoli is this place, main side where the exchange of oxygen and the carbon dioxide is going on. So it must be covered with these blood vessels. That's why they said it is highly vascularized area, right? And it is thin wall. It, it is a thin walled area means since there is an exchange, you know, by diffusion process, the exchange is going on, it must be thin and moist, right? So this alveoli will be very thin walled nature. Then it's a pouch like sac like structure, like a small sac like structure, it is, right? And the wall of this each alveoli is made up of three layers. So it is made up of three layers. The layers are, the outermost layer is thin squamous epithelial cells. The outermost layer is made up of very thin squamous epithelial cells. Okay. And the innermost layer is endothelium of alveolar capillaries. Endothelium of alveolar capillaries. So between these two, basement membrane is there. Fine. So, this is a three layers of this alveoli, right? And one more point here. The squamous epithelial cells, there is two type of cell is there. The, the first one is a type 1 cell and the second one is a type 2 cells. So, the type 1 cell is actually very thin. It's a very thin cell. 
and the type 2 cell is a thick cell. So type 2 cell is releasing a substance that is known as a surfactant. Surfactant. So actually this is actually one of the lipoproteins. The protein is a substance. So this function of this surfactant is actually this is useful to you know reduce this you know uh, collapsing nature of the alveoli. You know when the air is moving inside the alveoli, when it is exchanging the gases, this functions of the alveoli should not collapse. So that will be prevented by this you know surfactant. Actually, it is one of the sleeper protein. Understand? Okay. Let us see about the structure here. So look at the structure of this alveoli. It is very thin in nature, and it is small pouch-like cell, right? And it is highly vascularized, we said. Can you notice? Highly vascularized. So, you know, pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein is connected. It is becoming as a capillaries. Capillaries surrounding the alveoli. So, pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. What do you mean pulmonary artery? Pulmonary artery will bring this deoxygenated blood. Will bring the deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary artery. So the here it is mentioned. So pulmonary artery branch will bring the deoxygenated blood from the heart. Okay. So this is the artery. It is bringing this, and finally it becomes a capillaries. It will around this alveoli. This capillary will surround there, right? Then pulmonary vein will collect the oxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein will collect the oxygenated blood. How? This will leave the deoxygenated blood here. And already we have this oxygen in this alveoli. So this pulmonary vein will bring this oxygenated blood from here and it will transport again to the heart. So this is blue color is pulmonary artery and this reddish color is this pulmonary vein. So both the capillaries surrounded by this, surrounded in this in a alveoli. Understand the single one is known as this alveolus. So there is a structure about this alveoli. So this is the end region of this you know uh, respiratory system and finally it is this area fully it is covered with this lungs right so let us see about the nature of this lungs again so listen the lungs actually lungs is uh, kept in the center of this thoracic region right and it is fully covered with the airtight compartment so the lungs is in the center so if we go in this you know dorsal side so this is the dorsal view and below that we could say it's a ventral side so if this is a dorsal side this is a ventral side fine so the dorsal side it consists of vertebral column so if we stand up in a straight posture we could say back side back side it's this vertebral column is there am i right front side or ventral region sternum is there sternum chest bone is called sternum lateral sides are either both sides uh, the rib cage is there, right? Rib cage is there, and the lower side diaphragm is there. Have you got? And overall, it is covered with this membrane that is pleural membrane. So between this double layered membrane, it is a pleural membrane. Between this pleural membrane, there is a pleural fluid is there, right? And this pleural membrane is made up of elastic connective tissue as well as the capillaries will be there, right? Okay, let us see the structure. So listen the structure of this lungs. Actually, the lungs will be in the center. The front part, there is this, you know, uh, chest bone will be there, sternum. Back side, this is vertebral column bone will be there. And the sides, both the sides, it is a rib cage will be there. And it fully it is covered with a double layered membrane, there is pleural membrane. Instead, pleural fluid will be there, right? So, this is at the bottom, it is covered with this membrane that is known as a diaphragm, right? So, that's all about the structure of this lungs. So now we said about this anatomy or the internal structure of this respiratory system. It commences from, actually the system commences from this external nostrils. You know, it commences from external nostrils and it ends with the alveoli, right? It ends with the alveoli. Next, it is connected with the circulatory system. The circulatory system will take this oxygen to the cells there. Understand? So the next topic actually we have to discover how it will be taken, how the mechanism is going on actually, right? Okay, fine. So listen, so before we move to this mechanism of breathing, so here one more concept they said regarding this, you know the character of this respiratory uh, surface area, 
so the alveoli is the place where this uh, you know the exchange is going on right so what are the nature should be there for this alveoli to exchange these gases right that is a point actually so actually the first point is that is should the area should be so it must be very large actually it must be very large the area must be very large and you should be supplied with the blood vessels blood vessels so already we said there is a lot of this alveoli is there in the lungs and it is already it is we said it is supplied with the blood vessels also fine then then it should be thin that point also we said it must be thin so this is the nature it should be there for this one surface area to exchange the gases it should be extremely thin right then it must to have the contact with the environment contact with contact with environment right so from the environment only we are getting this air and oxygen so it must to contact with this environment then the last one they say you should permit it should be the permeable one of this respiratory gases so it should be as a permeable one so it should permit this oxygen and the carbon dioxide transport right so this is the characteristic feature of this respiratory surface right and one more point we have to see here it is uh, steps involved in the respiration what are the steps are involved in respiration steps steps in respiration right so in the digestion also we said the steps right ingestion digestion absorption assimilation ejection so likewise here also what are the steps will be followed for this respiration right so the first step of course we know that is exchange of air between this atmosphere and lungs so exchange might be there exchange 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 of air right exchange of air between this atmosphere and the lungs right then then the next next one is this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide from this lungs lungs to blood lungs to blood so first we said from the environment to the lungs environment to the lungs here from the lungs to the blood again right and the third step is oxygen the carbon dioxide by the blood transportation transportation so trans so from the blood it is transported to the cells right then there again we could say exchange of gases between the blood and the cells again here one exchange is going on exchange here the exchange is between blood and cells blood and cells right so here it is leaving this oxygen and collecting the carbon dioxide right so there is the next process we could say the next process uptake of oxygen by the cells for various activities and release of carbon dioxide so finally it is releasing releasing carbon dioxide so listen so first of all we are breathing the air so there is one exchange is going on first right so this exchange is going on between this environment and the lungs right and the next exchange is actually next process is going on from the lungs the oxygen the carbon dioxide transportation is going on to the blood so here on next exchange here from the lungs it is coming towards the blood right okay then from the blood oxygen and the transportation is going on right then blood is carrying the oxygen as well as carbon dioxide then it is bringing to the cells again so cells it will utilize then it will release this carbon dioxide so that carbon dioxide again it will be you know collected by the next veins now right so finally finally they said it is releasing the carbon dioxide so this released carbon dioxide will be collected by the veins so this is the process next by it is step by step it is going on finally this carbon dioxide will be taken to the respiratory system that is the first one actually you know it will come again here so it will be released outside through the nostrils right so that's all about this you know anatomy as well as the steps it is involved in this respiration in the next class we will talk about this 
you know mechanism of breathing right so until that you can go for these topics so especially in today's topic the primary functions of this respiratory system you can learn it is in the page number 121 then the different respiratory organs of this every organisms that you can learn that also in page number 121 and this you know this uh, anatomy or the structure of this respiratory system that also you can learn as a five mark question right so in that actually some, sometimes they can ask only about this you know uh, tracheal region or only about the lungs or so only about this you know nostrils region pharynx region or all together also they can ask right okay so these are those things which is made up of which kind of the cells so those things you can learn as a one mark question otherwise you can learn as a five mark question right then the finally the characteristic features of the respiratory surface and what are the steps involved in this respiration so these are the things this page number 124 so these are the things you can learn before we meet in the next class fine thank you